2012, 13 through 2015, 16, where she assisted at all district sites on an as needed basis. The district recently received news that Ms. Flacilla passed away at the age of 72. Sympathy and support are offered to the family and friends of Kathy Flacilla. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Oh, actually a correspondent to the board. Does anyone have any correspondence they'd like to acknowledge? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Next is approval of the agenda. Uh, we're being asked to approve two agenda meeting or two or no, to approve the agenda. Uh, and it has been amended. I just got this a little while ago. Uh, there is has been we've amended item 6.5.2, which is an agreement with the United Construction and Landscape for the new aquatics facility at La Habra High School, and it has been pulled from the agenda at this point in time. So with that um, a, a change, I look for a motion. Move approval of the amended agenda. It's been moved and seconded by Vicki. Um, I second it. Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, Jenna, would you like to make a brief provisional vote? Uh, I approve. Thank you. Uh, and the board members, all in favor, please say aye. Yes, Ms. Mrs. Bushy. Aye. Ms. Klausker? Aye. Ms. Fallon? Aye. Dr. Jang? Aye. Dr. Calhoun? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have approval of the minutes. And as I started to say, we have two, we have the March 9th regular board meeting and the March 30th special board meeting. We were all there. So I think we can take them together if that's okay with all of you. Okay, is there a motion to approve? A motion to approve. I'll second. It's been moved by Chester, seconded by Joanne. Any questions, comments? Uh, Jenna, would you like to give your preferential vote, please? I approve. And the board? Yes, Mrs. Bushy? Aye. Ms. Klatsker? Aye. Ms. Folly? Aye. Dr. Jane? Aye. Dr. Calhoun? Aye. Thank you. Okay, this is Jenna's night. We get to have a student board member report. Look forward to that, Jenna. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, President Bucci, Dr. Scambray, and members of the board. This is my student board member report for March. From March 15th to the 19th, Borna Park had its annual Battle of the Classes competition, their biggest spirit event of the year. Each class earned points by completing various activities like baking competitions, Among Us tournaments, and Minecraft building competitions. Each grade level also created and performed a skit. Borna Park has selected their executive ASB cabinet for next year, and their homecoming game was April 6th. Fullerton has continued with their annual Mr. Fullerton event, only virtual this year. 11 senior boys participated and it was released via YouTube on April 9th. Their ASB has continued producing weekly brain break videos and the most recent ones were doodling and dancing where they filmed videos of students and teachers dancing together. Fullerton has included student interviews on their podcast and their weekly video announcements are still released every Friday. They've also welcomed a new executive board. La Habra has La Habra had a competition on Instagram and posted riddles on their story. Each class earned points for answering correctly. On March 13th, they released a special podcast episode titled A Year Later, and they collected talent show, talent show submissions through Instagram in March. La Habra's ASB has done some great work towards self-improvement, and they're currently reading The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens in class. Their election for ASB cabinet were March 8th to the 12th, and ASB applications were sent out this month. La Vista La Sierra worked diligently on their talent show throughout March, and the final product was a big success. Each act submitted a video and it was posted on their Instagram for students to vote on. They also created a flyer to advertise the event. Their final two acts will be moving on to the district-wide talent show. In their ASB class, La Vista has been writing love and, love and appreciation notes to send to friends, family, and teachers. Sonora's weekly announcement videos have been averaging 400 views, which are great numbers for an unusual year. They recently created Instagram accounts for each class and advertising their homecoming spirit week through these platforms. Sonora had a homecoming court halftime show at their football game on April 2nd, where they crowned their Raider royalty. 
They've also continued their podcast and teacher buddies initiatives. Sunny Hills opened homecoming core applications on March 3rd to senior girls and interviewed the applicants on March 16th. The finalists were announced on March 30th and they crowned the homecoming queen at the football game on April 9th. Sunny Hills Stress Less and Psychology Club teamed up with, with the Orange County Department of Education to plan a celebration of mental health event and a special Heal Spirit Week. The event took place on March 19th virtually, and it was a great time and place for students to come and engage in stress-free activities. Also, Sunny Hills elections for ASB Executive Cabinet are happening this week. To strengthen to strengthen the bond between students at Troy, their ASB started a pen pal initiative. Participation was voluntary, but they got a good turnout and paired lower with upperclassmen. The pen pals have now begun sharing letters back and forth. Troy had a drive through senior sunset event on campus to celebrate their seniors in a COVID safe manner, and their Mr. THS event took place on March 19th via YouTube. In replace of our annual spring community service activity, the Student Advisory Council has been filming and producing thank you videos for members of our community. Each school had a different responsibility in regards to the video, and they are both now edited and complete. One video will be sent out to the teachers in our district, and the other will be sent out to medical workers in our community as a big thank you for all they've gone through and sacrificed for us this year. Thank you, and this concludes my student board member report for March. Thank you very much, Jenna. Uh, any questions or comments? I have a couple questions, Jenna. Um, could you give us a little bit more information about the talent show, the, like the date? And it is going to be virtual, right? So we could yes. watch it on Zoom. Um, so it will be virtual. The date is um, April 20, I want to say it's 23rd. It's a Friday. Um, and it's a fundraiser with Rotary and Flock. Um, so I believe ticket emissions are $10 and that's good for five votes. So it's $2 per vote um, and you can um, buy more after that, but the initial cost to attend um, is $10. And there'll be two acts from each school. And then the acts are going to be um, pre-recorded so that like all together, um, there's gonna be, everyone's gonna film at different times. So there's a lot of people being exposed, but they wanted the production to be the same for each event or for each um, performance. So that will happen. So it'll look like a pretty uniform um, event, but will be done virtually. Okay. And how would we get tickets to that? So I don't believe that they've gone on sale yet. Um, we just haven't, you know, we don't have a link set up, but I can definitely share it with everyone once we have that set up. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and then the other thing, just the stat, I, we don't want you to leave ever, but uh, <laughs> I would be interested in the status of your um, school, school board member uh, selection. Process. Oh, yes. So all of our applications were due on april 7th um a lot of our applicant or our applicants were invited to attend the board meeting tonight and then interviews are april 30th okay and are you meeting in person so that you can um no they'll be virtual interviews be virtual. Okay. okay thank you very much any other comments questions okay thank you so much all right uh, moving on now to school reports uh dr Stanley. uh miss bushy i let everybody know that uh, I am one of the judges for the talent contest. Oh, you're not in the contest. Yeah, I didn't make the cut for the talent <laughs> contest, which is a good thing. So they let me judge it. And, and you're retiring, so you're not going to be in trouble. I can be choose. bought. Uh, pizza, <laughs> steak, uh, anything. Okay, first up, let's go with Will Minster from Troy High School. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bushy, members of, the, members of the board. We are looking forward to having students back to school four days a week, beginning the 19th. Thank you very much for your support and making that happen. Already there are more students coming back to campus for the various sporting events and we're seeing more students in our classrooms. We are preparing for a drama production. Everyone seemingly enjoying all the sports and with the last football game this Friday night, you know, that will be exciting. 
Regarding our AP exams, the vast majority of students are opting for the in-person testing in the AP administration one beginning May 3rd. And for us, that's 1,442 students taking 3,100 exams. And that's not bad for a pandemic year, just a little drop. Troy then JRGC has been busy. On the 27th of March, Troy uh, team took first in the Area 11 Brain Brawl and won the state championship. They will be going to the virtual nationals on April 24th. Earlier on the 23rd, our NGRTC Runtime Terror won the Cyber Patriot National Championship in the All Service Division. We'll see them later tonight. And then on Saturday, April 3rd, West Coast Warriors Drill Team, our Troy West Coast Warriors Drill Team, competed virtually in the 2021 NGRTC National Academic Athletic and Drill Championship. And we will find out how they did. It's, I don't think they judge until the 15th. If any Science Olympiad national champions last weekend won the California State Championship and won the event with 88 points, 78 points ahead of the second place team, North Hollywood High School. This is Troy's 27th State Science Olympiad Championship. And this year, the national championship will be virtual, I think uh, virtually at Arizona State University. Um, all the competitions thus far have been virtual and they're marching for towards a fourth national championship with a 2020 gap year due, due to COVID. And then last but not least, a shout out to our Troy Media students, teacher Dr. Knowles and coach Mr. Finnegan for setting the bar on our athletic telecast beginning across country and including sports across the spectrum. And they do a pretty decent job on board meetings as well. Thank you to our parents, teachers, counselors, school support staff, superintendent, cabinet, and the board for always supporting Troy High School and helping us continue to do what's best for kids. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you, Will. Next up from Sonora High School, Marvin Atkins. Thank you, Dr. Scambury, Board President Bushi, board members, and student board member. At Sonora High School, we are extremely proud of our class of 2021 seniors. Although they finished junior year remotely and have been adjusting to learning in a hybrid format, they continue to excel at the highest levels. Our 40 IB candidates have seen this hard work recognized by universities as well. The most seniors in school history have been accepted to the UC system overall with 13 seniors being accepted to UCLA. Our class of 2021 seniors have been accepted to every UC school along with Stanford, Yale, Harvard, Brown, and Cornell. Many of these students are first generation college students and we are thrilled that they have the opportunity to show their exceptionalism and dedication to learning in a new environment, although they will always be Raiders. We have students who have achieved the state level with their proficiencies in the area of equine science and service learning as well. Also, Matthew Corona, a Sonora graduate of 2020, has made it to the second round of interviews for state FFA office. If elected, Matthew, in May, Matthew will represent all FFA members across California. We are very proud of all of our students associated with the Ag Department. We have 125 students who are eligible to receive the state seal of biliteracy. Our students and our teachers and counselors are working hard as well. We had relationship training with the support of educational services to better understand our student population and ourselves during these trying times on our staff development on April 2nd. Sonora staff is more than ready to receive our students on April 19th, which we thank you, the board and superintendent, for working together. We're ready to accept our students with open arms and arms of understanding. All of our athletes and sports are going on. Kudos to them. I asked one of the students why they were so happy, even though we were losing. They said, they, it's funny, they said, that they are just happy to be out there participating in athletics. I just wanted to leave you with these long song lyrics. Please excuse the grammatical errors, but ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no obstacle big enough. Sonora Raiders are here to achieve success regardless. 
I thought you were going to sing that for us, Matt. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. Next up from La Vista La Sierra, Sandy Liana. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bushi, members of the board. Students at La Vista La Sierra actively participated, as Jenna told you in her report, in a virtual talent show. We were not sure what kind of participation we were going to be able to generate, but the kids were really excited and they, they brought their acts to us. And we were really proud of our top three contenders. We had a great performance by a young man on the electric guitar who will represent us in the district talent show. Um, we had a, a young artist who is a, an immigrant here from Guatemala and he lives in um, Crittenden residence. And he um, did a time-lapse video of a piece of art which is hard to, um, to bring forward to the district art show. And we are very grateful to Rotary for working with us um, so that this young man could, prevent, pre could present his talent um, on, on a pre-made video for your pleasure at the district talent show. We also had some other acts that were really amazing, but those were our top two. Last week, our juniors participated in um, CASP testing, and we have now completed that at La Vista La Sierra. Thanks to our new guidance tech, Carlos Aldaco, for seamlessly organizing this event, which had many challenges as it's being done online and in person for the first time ever. And finally, congratulations go to La Sierra ATP teacher, Mrs. Sylvie Long Latieri who was just named as a finalist in the Orange County Teacher of the Year competition. We're very, very proud of Mrs. Long Lactieri. She represents La Sierra and our adult transition program very well. Thank you. And that concludes my report. Thanks, Sandy. Next up, principal at, where are we at here? La Habra, Matt Eels. <laughs> Adam Gesson. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bushi, members of the board. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. La Habra High School is in full swing with CAS testing, much like every one of our other schools as well. And we are excited to welcome back our cohort A and B students starting this Monday. And thank you very much for your support for that. Speaking of excitement, we were excited to recognize our top 100 students at our 64th annual Top 100 event this past week that was held in our beautiful Performing Arts Center. And boy, was it nice to have an activity inside. It was really, really nice. ASB Executive Board, elections are over and we congratulate Tess Cardi for being selected as our 2021-22 Executive Board President. And ASB is very busy this week and will continue throughout the next few days having activities at break because it is homecoming. Athletics continues to be in full swing as we play our final football game this next Friday against an undefeated Sunny, Sunny Hills team. Uh, I think it's going to be the game of the year, and it comes to an abrupt stop because regardless, we are done on Friday. Um, also at that event, we will be recognizing our senior cheer athletes as well as football players um, and then, of course, our homecoming festivities during halftime. Girls and Boys Volleyball has uh, started along with swimming and diving. Tennis, basketball, softball, soccer, and baseball, who is currently ranked fourth in their division, are well underway. And wrestling will begin this next week. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. Thank you, Matt. Next up, Principal of Buena Park, Sanji Bird. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bushi, and members of the board. Uh, with the athletic season coming to a close and the spring season in full swing, it's been incredibly busy at the park, but with lots of well, lots to celebrate. First, our girls water polo team, they finished off another successful season, finishing third in league and in the top 10 in their CIF division. Unfortunately, like Matt just said, there are no CIF playoffs for the what's called the fall winter sports season. So we'll have to wait till next year to make a playoff run. Uh, but we will have playoffs for the spring sports and given the strong start by many of our programs, uh, we are hopeful to have them making uh, CIF runs this year. Our girls softball team is off to another strong start. They're currently three and one and they rank third in their division. Uh, girls soccer is uh, has a winning record and so do the boys and they're both ranked in the high in their divisions. 
girls basketball is off to a 2-0 and start, so we're really excited about them. And our boys and girls tennis teams are both off to a 3-0 and start in league. So we're excited about their success. In other school news, we currently have two 2020 graduates, Kelly Cotledge and Sarita David, who are both state finalists in their respective FFA proficiency areas. So if you know about that, even after graduation, they continue to progress through the state rankings with their proficiency areas. So kudos to them. And our CASP testing started yesterday and we currently have 84% of our students who have completed at least one of the tests so far. So we didn't have a clue how this was gonna go, but we are so happy that they are engaged and working towards that. And then lastly, um, I hope you've had a chance to view a sneak peek of the photos of the gymnasium in my newsletter or on Twitter or whatever. Um, it is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. We appreciate uh, the Board of Trustees, District Construction Division, and obviously our community members um, through the passage of Me Measure I because it's an absolutely phenomenal um, new facility. And that concludes my April report. Thank you. Thank you, Sanji. Next up, excuse me, Principal of Fullerton, Laura Rubio. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bucci, members of the board. We have been having a great time at Fullerton, uh, along with all of the schools, with all of our sports teams competing. <coughs> our students and parents have been appreciative for the opportunity to have our students out there playing their sport and once again being active and social and representing their school. A couple of weeks ago, we hosted our senior night before our home football game. It was a great opportunity for our parents and families to be there and start to have a send off for our seniors, our senior dancers, cheer and song athletes, and our football team seniors as well. After a rough year, they were able to be honored for their four years of commitment to their sport and to their school. This week, we also administered and uh, administered the CASP testing. I am grateful for our teachers and our students for their flexibility and their commitment throughout this process. We have gotten a good turnout as well as our admin team walks through the classrooms. We have seen all of our students and teachers doing their best and being committed to the test. As you might have seen in the last uh, newsletter, every year our school leadership team reviews all nominations for inductees into our FUHS Wall of Fame which dates all the way back to 1919. These two to three FUHS alumni usually get recognition at our homecoming football game every year. This year, this recognition had to wait, but fortunately we had the opportunity to honor them at our last home game. We had two of the three in attendance and it's always an honor to recognize um, all of our inductees. First, we had Jim Campanis. He is the class of 1961 and at FUHS he played football and baseball he did make it to the Dodgers farm team and eventually made it to play for the majors for quite a few years. He played for the LA Dodgers, the Kansas City Royals, and the Pittsburgh Pirates before he retired. Dave Royer was our second inductee. He's the class of 1977. David served four years in the Navy where he was a sonar uh, technician and started designing his own microphones. He is the owner of Royer Labs, maker of Royer Ribbon Microphones. His company was awarded a technical Grammy in 2013 for contributions to the music industry and for his design of his microphones. And our third inductee was Paul Nguyen, class of 2004. While attending FUHS, he participated in wrestling and made it to CIF. He joined the Army and was an Army Ranger, and he is the recipient of the Purple Heart for his wounds received during combat while deployed in Iraq. And thankfully, he did make a full recovery after that. We love our history and traditions at Fullerton, and it's great when we can honor those alumni who not only contributed to our school while in attendance, but have also had an impact on our community and many times an impact on our country. And we're excited to celebrate them all. And thankfully, we are able to do so also in our, our gym. Hopefully you get a chance to stop by. We are opening for our first game uh, in our new gym this coming Thursday. And we've tried to honor our traditions within that, that gym. And I'd like to thank um, the board, Dr. Scambray, Todd Butcher for helping us uh, throughout this process and helping us execute our vision. So thank you. And that concludes our board report. Thank you very much, Laura. Last but not least, Mr. Alan Witten, Sunny Hills High School. Thank you, Dr. Scambray, President Bushy, members of the board. Sunny Hills is so proud of biology teacher, Kathy Bevel. Kathy is one of Sunny Hill's most beloved teachers. And this year she has been awarded the North Orange County SELPA Above and Beyond Award for all she does for our kids. Congratulations, Ms. Bevel. 
And we continue to celebrate all of our kids' post high school plans, including many acceptances to some of the country's most elite schools, including Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Penn, and more. We're thrilled that COVID has not slowed down our kids' drive to pursue post-secondary opportunities. In fact, uh, congrats to board member Klatsker. Jacob has just decided on the University of Washington uh, over our alma mater, University of Arizona, but great school <laughs> also. And our very own student board member, Jenna Bining, is deciding between Berkeley, UC Davis, and UC Irvine. Congratulations, Jenna. And uh, last, each year, Sunny Hills participates in the Chapman University Holocaust Writing Contest. Congratulations to Dr. Zubko's student, Sharon Sung, for her prestigious uh, recognition at this competition. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Alan. Good job, guys. Any, <clears throat> any questions or comments from the board members? Thank you all for your great reports, as always. Next is uh, timely information from the board and the superintendent. Anybody have any timely information? No? Dr. Scambry, no timely information. Okay. Okay, next is a fun part, accommodations and recognition. And the first is to recognize the Troy High School Cyber Defense Team. And I think Dr. Zener and Dr. Minster are going to handle that, right? Yes. Thank you, President Bushi, members of the board and Dr. Scambray. We are very excited to have a commendation and recognition in person for you this evening. We are recognizing commending the Troy High School Cyber Defense Team. The team took the national championship held virtually on March 28th. And this is Troy's third national championship following wins in 2018 and 2019. So we're very proud of them. In addition to Dr. Minster, we have Commander Stubblefield and multiple students who have been waiting in our wings and will be coming through these doors momentarily. And we've all practicing our social distancing. So we've asked some folks to give them some space. We have good choreography. And here they come. <laughs> Perfect. Would you take the mic? Okay, so we're going to run traffic here a little bit. So we have our uh, Runtime Terror, uh, Cyber Patriot, uh, Cyber Patriot National Championship uh, All Services Division team. Uh, we have our coach, uh, Alan Stubblefield. We also have a couple other coaches um, as well, uh, Mr. Kim and Mr. Nguyen. But I'm going to let uh, Mr. Stubblefield do a little more talking, and then I will have certificates here in my hand, and we'll go from there. Good evening, President Bushy, uh, members of the board. I'm, I'm Alan Stubblefield. I'm in my 16th year as a teacher here at, uh, in, in our district. I've been teaching ROTC in the past five years. I've been our uh, sole cybersecurity teacher. Um, joined uh, today with Christian Nguyen, um, who's an art teacher at Troy High School and a cyber coach, and David Kim, who's a, a lot like myself, a computer science. Come over here, guys. Move, move this way. There we go. Uh, and a, next year, we'll be teaching cybersecurity at Troy. Uh, real quickly, um, Troy have, was the first high school in the country to offer a four-year pathway for cyber defense. Um, we have the largest after-school cybersecurity program in the country. This year, despite COVID, we had 299 Troy students who were part of our program. There are also cyber teams at La Habra, Fullerton, uh, and Sunny Hills. Um, we also support local middle schools, uh, both Fullerton School District and others in, in the area. Of our 68th graders this year, 40 applied to come to Troy High School. So we are a way to get people excited about coming to Troy High School. The team here represents uh, one of our 51 teams that we had, um, and they um, uh, brought home a national championship in a very unexpected manner. Um, they, first of all, they, they qualified. We had three competition rounds. They play the role of defenders. They had their, It's their job to keep computers and networks safe from hackers. Uh, by qualifying for nationals, they actually face a red team of hackers. These are professionals 
that do this for a living. They're good people. They're in the US. They're not uh, hackers from other countries or hackers looking to make money on uh, any um, ulterior methods. Um, and so this team, uh, five of them competed in, in the morning, trying to defend their windows and their Linux machines. And uh, Chan Chung, Brian Nee, Johnny Nee, uh, Anna Wu, and Justin Wang were our five in the morning. Unfortunately, Chan couldn't log in. It was a, they were competing from home. They had, we had tested it out the week before, everything was fine, but come Saturday morning when they went to log in, the system would not let him log in. So for the next three and a half hours, the, the four of them were working very hard and while he was talking to them on the Discord app. In the afternoon, uh, they had a 90 minute competition for networking. So their job is to create a virtual network and answer a, uh, a online quiz. And Tai Yu, but, but who didn't go in the morning or in the afternoon? Chan, again. Chan, okay. So Chan was scheduled not to compete. The other five were there in the afternoon. They took, so um, the, the scoreboard doesn't tell us anything. Doesn't give us school names, doesn't give us scores. We were guessing as it ends up, we were guessing wrong as far as where we were. So we, um, for the online live award ceremony, we're watching them name teams, third place, not Troy, second place, not Troy, third, um, first place, Troy High School. And uh, I was shocked, they were shocked. Uh, we were on the Discord app together and I think we, uh, we broke the app for the amount of volume that was that uh, took place. <laughs> Uh, this, I think, is also the youngest team in the history of the competition. Uh, Justin is a junior. Uh, my sophomores are Brian, Chan, and Johnny. And then we have two freshmen, Anna and Tai Yu. Um, so, you know, it's just amazing to see what they've done. Chan Chung on the left. <laughs> Brian Nee with the trophy. Chan, there you go. Justin, right here. Johnny. Anna. And Tai Yu. There we go. And then uh, Chris Caulfield, for you. Thank you. You and Mr. Chan and Mr. Ritter. Where's the letter? That's part of the letter. Um, this year, we awarded 200 bars. 214 varsity letters in cyber. Um, and those students earn that letter by making it to the top 30% nationally with that ranking. Um, probably one of the first high schools to recognize cyber achievements. It is an e-sport. It is an e-sport with a job opportunity at the end. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Can I please? Can you all come like in front of the podium? Yes, please. Okay. Please. Um, they've met for the first time today in person. So look at me first, and then and then I'll I'll let you all. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All a challenge point at this the competition point. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Isn't that something you do in the Navy where you shake hands? And shake yes. Yeah, and if you I mean, don't have it, you have to buy a beer. Oh, is that right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have congratulations. That's wonderful. Thanks for bringing the kids. So much. Oh, great time. Oh. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Okay. <clears throat> okay, President Bushi, that, that concludes our recognition of the Troy team. Thank you very much. And I think we've got everybody back in place. I, that was quite a choreography job you had there. <laughs> Were the principals able to watch or are you hiding out in the parkway? <laughs> Okay, thank you and congratulations again to all the students. That was amazing. I've been bragging to my little grandchildren about the little techie ones. They're looking forward to being in cybersecurity <laughs> classes. So, all right. Um, next is the recognition of the district art exhibit showcase uh, recipients you know unfortunately or i mean unfortunately this year we couldn't have the students in the in the boardroom and we didn't get to see their beautiful artwork across the room but i do have a few words that i wanted to say relative to the students i think they've all been given um, their recognition so on behalf of the board the superintendent and the district art teachers it's a pleasure to recognize the many talented students who participated in the annual district arts exhibition showcase. The artwork produced by these students not only represents the amazing gifts they possess, it also demonstrates the outstanding educational programs that are provided by our exemplary teachers. The district's art exhibition showcase is sponsored by the District Education Foundation, a nonprofit organization in an effort to promote the visual arts of district students. This exhibit is organized by the District Art Curriculum Committee and District Art Teachers. The selections have been juried by college and university professors. The student art exhibit is available for online viewing on the district website. If you haven't looked at that yet, I encourage everyone to visit this extraordinary exhibit and see the amazing artwork done by our very talented students. We would like to recognize and thank all the district art teachers. We hope that many are here tonight online to receive this acknowledgement. A special thank you to the art committee for organizing and designing this virtual website that gives the community the opportunity to view this amazing artwork from home. The judging criteria for the art exhibit include overall artistic ability, effective use of selected medium, and techniques used to communicate the desired message and effect. Attention to detail, balance, symmetry, and or effect. Technical ability of craftsmanship and quality. Imaginative communication of ideas and emotion using clarity and technique. Those are the five criteria that are used. A certificate of achievement from the board an award ribbon and a monetary award were mailed to each of the winning entries. Each honorable mention winner received a $10 award. Each third place winner received $50, each second place 75, and each first place winner received a $100 award. Once again, on behalf of my colleagues on the board of trustees, the superintendent, district administrators, and district art teachers, I want to thank the students for their participation. I especially want to commend all of the students for their outstanding talent. I hope you all will continue to expand your abilities and continue to grow artistically and academically. We have thoroughly enjoyed viewing your artwork these past few weeks. Congratulations to all of the winners. I wish I had time to read all their names, but you know who you are. Okay, that brings us now to updates from our employee and PTA associations. And first, um, in the audience this evening in person, we enjoyed seeing you on the screen, but here in person this evening is president of FSTO, Angie Senkak, Senkak excuse me. Good evening, President Bushi, 
members of the Board of Trustees and Dr. Scambray. And it is great to be here tonight. I really appreciate it. Our executive board and our rep council members met today to go over, to, to begin discussing the tentative agreement, which has been, uh, which was decided upon last Friday. Our standing rules, unfortunately, state that five days are needed to be in the hands of every one of our uh, membership groups, the executive board, the rep council, and then our general membership. Today's meetings were to help us determine how we were going to deal with that. We have decided to, sus to suspend the rules for this voting only, and we will have the tentative agreement ready to be voted on, opening up on Thursday evening at 5 p.m. Voting will close on Monday at 5 p.m., and the results will be ready for everybody on Monday evening. Thank you to the district's negotiating team. For the past 13 months, we have been together at least once a week. Um, they have been so gracious and so wonderful in helping us get to this point. There were a couple of bumps in the road on both sides, and we will attest to that too. But again, for 13 months, we came up with two MOUs, an addendum to an MOU, and a complete opening of a contract, which was ratified on Friday. So thank you to both sides. To our amazing team, the five members were amazing, working together collaboratively at all times, taking text messages, phone calls late at night, early in the morning, um, I will miss those 5.30 a.m. text messages, I'm telling you, um, but I'm still here. <laughs> so thank you to, to both sides. It was a great, great process. Our teachers have also supported our increase to um, in-person instruction beginning on April 19th. 70% of our teachers overwhelmingly agreed that having more students on our campuses would be a positive um, reflection on what it is we have done for the past 13 months. Um, trustee, and my phone is ringing right now, I can, <laughs> and it is one of my members. Um, trustee Jang and Trustee Klatsker will be guests at our April 20th Rep Council meeting, and we look forward to spending time with both of you and being able to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. And lastly, our FSTO members have been meeting remotely since last April, 12 months that we haven't been able to be together, but always on Zoom. We're looking forward to being back in our offices next August, and we will definitely be opening up and having our um, beginning of the year luncheon where everyone is invited. And I know President Bushi loves that invitation and we will be glad to host you all and have you there for that, that afternoon. Thank you. And thank you for everything that you've done for us too. Thank you, Angie. You know, that happened to me once I was giving a speech and I happened to be pre presenting with the head of CTA but my phone rang and I knew it was mine. No one else in the room knew that. I didn't fess up like you did. I just <laughs> <laughs> pretended it was someone else's. So nobody knew except today, a lot of people know now. Thank you, Angie. Uh, next up, and again, in person, nice to see you, is the president of CSEA, President Sleiper. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. We'll hear from you later then. And did you have any comment from PTA, Mrs. Hart? Yes, we do. We I do. have a, a comment from the president, from the president. So um, this is from the Fullerton Council PTA. Good evening, everyone. We hope you are all feeling as optimistic as we are these days. With the vaccines rolling out to almost everyone and things starting to open up again, it really feels like spring has sprung and there is a lot of hope. PTA is moving along quite well. Fullerton Council had their annual elections a couple of weeks ago. We would like to present our new board for the 2021-22 school year. Presidents, Christy Carter and Wendy Reed. Executive Vice President, Nivi Jawar. Secretary, Lisa Sherman. Treasurer's spot is still open and she remarks what a great opportunity for someone to join us. Membership, Kathy Fernandez. Auditor, Lisa Jewell. Historian Jody Frouster, Frausto. We are also looking for nominations for our honorary service awards. This award honors those who give outstanding service to the children and youth of our community. We encourage you to nominate anyone in our community you think is deserving of this award. There are four different categories for HSA. Honorary service award, very special person award, outstanding teacher, and outstanding administrator. There is a link to the nomination form on our Facebook page. Also, for those 
who have graduating seniors, we are still accepting scholarship applications for our PTA scholarships. We look forward to seeing everyone again very soon. Wendy Reed, Christy Count Carter, and the Fullerton Council PTA Board. Thank you, Mrs. Harder. Next are public comments. Uh, and I think we have received some and will they be on screen? Yes, we have. Um, yes, we do have three uh, public comments. And the first one, I believe uh, her first name is Lisa. I'm sorry, I'm looking for the last name, but I believe all three are in the audience. So Lisa, if you could please raise your hand. Yes, Lisa Lamascus. So uh, if you could please join us. Thank you, President Bushi, members of the board, and Dr. Scambre. Teachers are life givers. They are the bridge to an education that safely lands kids in careers and socioeconomic brackets that allow access to uh, good nutrition, good health care, safe neighborhoods, and good schools for the next generation. A good administration puts the structure in place for good teachers to do this life giving work. During the March 30th board meeting, Dr. Scambra and his team presented a plan to return to in-person learning five days a week by April 12th. The board was presented with a comprehensive plan on how to safely and successfully accomplish this reopening. Yet the board rejected that proposal and opted instead for in-person learning four days a week. This is 20% less than what the administration advocated. There seemed to be a belief on part of some of the board members that distance learning was adequate However, for families like mine that struggle with internet connectivity, distance learning days can be hard. Even with the hotspots on all of our phones and the hotspot the district has provided, my students still get dropped from Zoom on a regular basis. This has happened during attendance, lectures, test prep, and tests. I can assure you this is not an adequate way to attend class and learning loss does take place. A year into the pandemic, there have been multiple studies documenting learning loss. A March 30th CNBC article entitled Virtual School Resulted in Significant Academic Learning Loss cites a survey in which 941 K-12 educators were surveyed regarding the impact of the pandemic on academic learning. 3% said there was no impact, 44% said there was some loss of learning, and 53% said there was significant loss of learning. This is one of a multitude of studies documenting learning loss. Yet, at the end of the last board meeting, in an apparent attempt to defend the board's decision of staying in hybrid until April 19th, and then only opening <clears throat> four days a week for in-person learning, a bold claim was made. Quote, just like we need to stop calling this learning loss, we need to stop phrasing this in the negative. Kids aren't losing anything. They are continuing, continuing to learn in hybrid until April 19th. This statement is in direct contradiction to what Dr. Scambray, various teachers, parents, and students have reported to this board over the last few months. I would like to know the empirical evidence in support of the claim, quote, the kids aren't losing anything. If we are changing the definitions of learning and learning loss, it would be helpful to know the new concrete definitions of these terms. As a parent, the board's lack of urgency to address learning loss is concerning. However, to not even acknowledge it or attempt to redefine learning and learning loss fails to meet many students and their need and stifles their ability to attain a life-giving education. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker will be Alexis Hartman. Okay. Hi, board. Thank you for allowing public comment. I hope you hear me and understand that as a student, it is taking me a lot of courage and bravery to speak out. My name is Alexis Hartman, and I'm currently a senior at Troy High School. I'm the varsity head cheer captain. I'm on board for two clubs. I'm involved in the broadcast journalism class, which is live streaming the board meeting right now, and I work closely with the special education department. I've been extremely impacted by this pandemic in every way possible, and I've seen how this pandemic has impacted every single aspect of Troy High School and the district itself. I commend you for wanting to get more kids on campus. I too want that more than anything. But by requiring students to come to school and only allowing three days to stay on Zoom before disabling their Zoom altogether, you are scaring students from cohort AB to cohort C. My main point that I would like to bring up is the way assessments are distributed on campus. At home, students can access the internet, access their notes, talk to other students in their classes, 
and access test, quiz, and worksheet answers from other periods. When you are in cohort AB, you are unable to do this. Those academically driven students that know they can take their assessments differently at home are scared to switch to AB because they will no longer have the benefit of taking these assessments in the way that they have been used to the entire year. If I were a junior who was reliant on my grades from this year to get into my dream college, I would be hesitant as well. We know this is an apparent issue by looking at the statistics of students switching from A, B to C. I personally know more than one person and have a teacher who has four kids switching back to C. As a result of students switching back to C, the average class size will stay almost the same in cohort A, B as compared to A and B being separate. This defeats the entire purpose of why you as a board want to combine the cohorts. In addition, there are hundreds of students involved in sports who get weekly COVID tests and play contact sports without masks that are still in cohort C. From this information, it is apparent that it is not always a COVID issue, but an academic issue as well. I understand that your goal is to get as many students as possible learning in person. In order to do this, you must get rid of the three-day rule, which is causing kids to switch from cohort AB to cohort C in order to have more academic privileges. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next person to speak is Michelle Knowles. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Michelle Knowles and I'm both a parent of two high school students and I'm also married to a teacher in district. Um, I understand firsthand how this year has impacted both uh, students and teachers and your actions during this extraordinary year uh, to protect students and staff, facilitate education and keep the students engaged is commendable and certainly has been no small task. Uh, we also know you can't please all of the people all of the time, and so you, you certainly have a tough job. I am speaking you, to you tonight uh, to ask you to reconsider the recent decision to require cohorts A and B to be present on campus four days per week for the remainder of the current school year. Um, although allowing uh, students cohort, uh, in cohorts A and B to choose um, to be present, on the four days, uh, during the four days is certainly welcome. Requiring them to be there, I believe to be detrimental. With only five full weeks of instruction remaining in the school year and with as much adjusting as all of the parties have done this year, it seems yet another extraordinary change for the students to have to choose to be all in or all out. I believe you will have yet more students choosing to stay home, eliminating even the small opportunities that they may have to be on campus and in a classroom. If this were January or February or even before the spring break in March, I would understand it. Uh, however, in mid-April, I don't see this as the next best step for the students. Uh, research tells us that changing routines is hard and even detrimental. And by allowing the students to choose to be present the additional two days on campus rather than requiring it, you have the opportunity to let the students continue their current routines. Uh, research also shows that by allowing choices, um, you empower people, motivate them to engage in their decisions and take ownership of their circumstances. So you also have the opportunity to empower the students to choose to be present more days or less days. I don't believe that allowing such choice adds more work for your very hardworking teachers, uh, since those teachers remain responsible for those on Zoom in cohort C, no matter who may be present in their classroom. Uh, with only five weeks left, I question why we would force the students into yet another change and strip them of what little control they may have over their days. Uh, please reconsider forcing the students to be all in or all out. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration and thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you, that concludes our comments. Thank you, Mrs. Harder. Uh, Dr. Scambray, um, we, I know normally we don't reply, you know, to the comments, but with regard to the student's comment and the three-day rule, wasn't there a memo that went out today that has adjusted that? Yeah, it gave, gave the students uh, more flexibility. They just have to work. It would be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so I think that did answer at least part of what right. the student was, and that should have gone out to the families and students at this point. Okay, thank you for that. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that brings us to reports. Um, and 5.1.1 is discussion item for board member attendance at graduation. Normally when we've had a study session before the board meeting, we've kind of just discussed where we would be going for graduation, but I guess we get to do that here with everyone, which is fine. And you have, you should have at your place uh, a matrix. So I think what I will do is just go from each one of you and ask if you have a preference of, I know we would all like to go to all the graduations. I don't want anybody to feel bad, <laughs> but we do sometimes try to spread ourselves around or whatever. And we're so happy that there is going to be in-person graduations this year. So I will start with our newest board member, Vicki Calhoun, and see if you would like to indicate where you would like to go this year. Um, Fullerton High School in La Vista. Okay, normally uh, La Vista, well, I don't know if it'll be the same. La Vista. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. So you said Fullerton. La Vista, La Sierra. Fullerton High School. Okay, Chester Jane. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have said Sonora, though. There you go. Uh, Joanne. Buena Park, and I'd like to say why, because I've been fortunate to go there before. 37 years ago, I started my student teaching there, and this is where I'm wrapping up my career this year, and I would love to bring that full circle. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and Lauren? I'm sure no one is surprised that I would like to go to Sunny Hill. <laughs> so you you know, this is working out uh, better than I thought. We, you know, we could tussle a little bit. So, um, okay, so we have, um, we have Sonora and Troy. And I was looking at the times. They're both on Thursday, one at six and one at seven. So I can do one, but I can't do both. Um, I could do, I could do one. Either one that you can't do. Okay, I haven't been, I haven't been to Troy for a while. Okay, I'll so, go somewhere. Okay, check the time, Vicki. See, Wednesday. Yeah, that won't work. Okay, Wednesday. Vicki, I think you have a problem with La Vista and Fullerton because Fullerton is at seven. The Vista is at six on the same day. Oh, so okay. we'll have to do a little bit of adjusting there, I think. If I have my preference, I would I will if I have my preference, I would do um uh La Vista La Sierra over Sonora. If somebody could do some you yeah, said I already got Fullerton. Fullerton. Yeah, Fullerton, but I, if if nobody has Sonora and it's a conflict. Is that a conflict there? Uh, yeah, I want Fullerton. So let me, I didn't understand what, what you were saying. Because okay, so Fullerton and Sonora are on the same, but they're an hour apart. That's too close. It's hard to right. make it to both because of parking and- Wait, no, wait. I don't have my glasses on. 26, 27. So of Fullerton and La Vista. I'll just would, do, I'll do Fullerton. You want to do Fullerton? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and not La Vista. Okay. Yeah, and I'll do Sonora. Okay, so then we need to have La Vista, Sonora, and Fullerton. How, we, how, how did we get all these? <laughs> no, I got, look, I have Sonora and I have Fullerton. Oh, you did Sonora? Okay. I'll do Sonora here. Okay, Vicki. In Fullerton and Sonora. Fullerton and Sonora. Because I can't do, because of the Vista and Fullerton on the same day. So I can't, I, just, I, I went to Fullerton. <laughs> so we just need somebody for La Vista. I can do La Vista. 
and Troy. They're different days. Okay. okay. This is better when we do this in a study session. <laughs> oh, no, it's sorry, guys. <laughs> It'd be the same thing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry about okay. this. Okay. Would you like me to read what I have? Yes. Yeah, I, I think we have uh, Joanne at Buena Park, Vicki at Fullerton, Chester at La Habra, Lauren at Sunny Hills, and Marilyn at Troy. You forgot Sonora. And Sonora is uh, Dr. Cahun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay. And then Troy. I can do La Vista, which is a different day from. Yes, La Vista last year is. Okay. Huh? Okay, we're good. Everybody happy? Anybody okay. want to jockey for a change or anything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see if we can wrestle Sunny Hills away from Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cage match. <laughs> That's her spot. And then, um, there, oh, we're missing La Sierra, the ATP, um, which is oh. Thursday. Oh, it's a different, it doesn't conflict with anything. So, I think if I think as many of us that would like to attend that's really very inspiring and touching if anybody would like to attend that. Okay. Lauren. Yeah, I would I've never been able to go and this is the first time I do not have a conflict with that date so I would like, I guess we'll all be there. You should. Yeah, yeah I, would very much I think it's nice if we um, and I would like to go as well. Okay, so, so we're all going. Okay, okay. All right, I think we're set. You got yes, that? I have a set. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. I guess it wasn't too painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next is uh, the new board bylaw. As you will recall, when we had that board workshop, the consultant said when she was putting together the governance handbook, she said, and then you can insert here board bylaw 9005. Well, I looked, we did not have 9005. So uh, I asked if staff would research that. And that is what be, is before you tonight for um, consideration. The vote would be the second. And the content of that, I noticed as I was doing the flag salute, the content of that is pretty much what's on the governance standards thing that's there, which is sort of what guides the way we do our job. So. It's not, we did discuss it a few years ago and somehow it never made its way into the board bylaw. But anyway, any questions or comments relative to that? Okay. Okay, well, we that will be back before us uh, at the May meeting for approval. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next is um, the basic textbook list revisions. Addendum three, and I think Sylvia Kaufman. Good evening, President Bushi, members of the board, and yes, this evening for first reading and information. The textbooks on the attached list are proposed for addition to the basic textbook list effective for the 2021-22 school year. In accordance with District Administrative Regulation 6711.1, the textbooks have been reviewed by teachers, the members of the appropriate curriculum committees have completed evaluation forms indicating that the books have been properly reviewed. The proposed additions have also been approved by administrative council and the superintendent. Information on the proposed basic textbooks are presently available in the education and assessment services division for review by any interested parties. The textbooks will be recommended for adoption at the May 11, 2021 board meeting. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions of Dr. Kaufman? Okay, thank you. We'll look for that at the next meeting. Okay, next, uh, now you're on. It's the uh, public hearing uh, for the initial proposal from CSEA for the successor agreement with the Fullerton Joint Union High School District. And Joyce, Joe Slyker, this was, you said later, you would be up, here you are. Right, here I am, thank you. Uh, Dr. Scambri, President Bucci, members of the board. First of all, uh, it's really great to be here. It's, I think the last time I was here was March of last year. So um, I think we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and it's it's a good thing, you know? So um, 
and it's the first time I've been in the room with Dr. Calhoun. We've talked on the phone, but it was nice meeting you tonight. So I'll get to the official part of this. Excuse me. <clears throat> the California School Associ uh, Employees Association and its Fullerton High Chapter 82 is submitting this initial proposal for public discussion in accordance with Government Code 3547. Fullerton High Chapter 82 is submitting this initial proposal to reopen the collective bargaining agreement between the district and CSEA for the successor negotiations. CSEA desires to alter or amend the following articles for the benefit of our bargaining unit members. CSEA looks forward to a cordial and cooperative negotiations between our parties. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Slyker. Uh, at this time, uh, it's we need to open a public hearing. Yes, I, I will open the public know. hearing and see if there are any present who would like to speak to the item. And I don't see, we don't, and no one coming up on the screen. I guess that would be an opportunity as well. And do you have any uh, wishing to? I'll just check. Uh, Weston, do we have anybody raising their hand for comment? No, we're fine. Okay, we're good. Okay, with that, then I will close the uh, public hearing. Thank you very much, Mr. Slyker. Okay, next is um, item 5.4.1, which is the resolution authoring, authorizing the issuance and sale of the district's 2021 general obligation refunding bonds. Uh, and Joan Velasco. Good evening, President Bushi, board members, Dr. Scambri and guests. Tonight, we're here to ask for approval of resolution number 32, which is for a 2021 general obligation refunding bond sale in the amount of $17,420,000. The money from this sale will be used to pay off the 2013 general obligation bonds and pay for the cost of issuance of these bonds. Um, on March 9th, the board meeting, Adam Bauer from Fieldman Rollap and Associates presented information to the board showing that by refunding these bonds, the taxpayers of the community will collectively save $1.6 million in property tax payments. We ask for approval of this resolution so that these bonds may be sold on April 21st, 2021. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we did have a thorough presentation and opportunity to ask questions. If you have any other questions, this would be a good time. I'm sure that Ms. Velasco could answer them. Everybody's okay? Okay, great. Uh, then uh, I'm going to look for a motion to approve resolution 2021 number 32. I move to approve resolution 2021-32. Is there a second? I'll second. And moved by Joanne Foley, seconded by Chester Jang. Um, are there any comments from anybody at this point? Okay. Jenna, would you like to uh, cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you. And board members, all in favor? Yes. Uh -huh. Mrs. Bushy? Aye. Ms. Klasker? Aye. Ms. Foley? Aye. Dr. Jang? Aye. Dr. Calhoun? Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next is 5.1. 5. 5 which is um, the Williams Settlement, Dr. Zener. Thank you, President Bushi, members of the board, and Dr. Scambray. Per the Williams Settlement, it is required that a quarterly report is made to the Board of Trustees during a meeting of the board with regard to the number of complaints and the nature of resolutions to the complaints received by the schools in the district. There have been no Williams settlement complaints during the third quarter of reporting. Per the Williams settlement, a report will be filed with the Orange County Department of Education. This will keep the district in compliance with the requirements of the law. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you very much. You know, this is a good thing because it does keep us accountable. But I remember, I, I wish I could remember the details of this, but this Williams settlement was a result of a lawsuit. And the I was an officer of CSBA at that time and one of our attorneys was involved in the resolution. When they came to this Williams thing, I said, how long will the districts need to do this? 
and it was kind of like forever. Does it seem like that to everybody? <laughs> I, I, I should look at a little bit more background, but it, it was a good solution to the, to the lawsuit, but I don't know about forever, but. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zener. Okay, that brings us now to the consent. And remember, we did pull item 6.5.2. So I would look for a motion to approve the consent minus that one item. Is there a motion? I'll motion to, can, to approve the consent. It's moved by Chester Jang, seconded second. by Joanne Foley. Uh, are there any questions? Um, or comments. Okay. Uh, Jenna, would you like to cast a preferential vote? I approve. Thank you. And board members, all in favor? Yes. Mrs. Harder? Mrs. Bushy? Aye. Ms. Klasker? Aye. Ms. Foley? Aye. Dr. Jang? Aye. Dr. Calhoun? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I think that concludes everything that I have here, unless any board member would like to make a comment. Joanne Foley? I do. I have an unanticipated conflict with our July meeting on July 13th, and I'm wondering if my board colleagues would consider moving that meeting to Monday, July 12th, or Thursday, July 15th. I'm good with it. <laughs> Smart Alec. Smart Alec. <laughs> Let's everybody check your calendars. Um, July 12th is um, my son's birthday. Okay. And July 15th, I will probably be in Seattle doing stuff. Go Huskies. <laughs> and um, so I won't be able to attend the reschedule if we move it. Um, it I think it would work out. I could, I could also make it work on Wednesday, July 14th, if that would... It's really just that Tuesday is the main issue and I could work so that I have the conflict. I don't know if Wednesday, July 14th, first of all, we already got on to more. No, I, th I think we're planning to do a trip on the 15th. So the 14th. And I think the work. 14th is ROP board meeting. So that wouldn't work either. Oh, okay. Is it the time of day or is it the whole day? It's the day. It's yes, the day. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'll, um, I might be able to reschedule. I'll see if I can work around it. So okay. I, I appreciate everybody looking at their calendar though and giving it a try. Could move it to the following Tuesday if that works the 20th. That works for me. Oh, I never even thought about changing the week. July. Yeah, the only thing I have on my calendar that day are things for the school year, which will not be happening. <laughs> so I don't know if that is something the board would be willing to entertain to move it a week later. It's fine with me. The Mrs. Following, Harder, will that work the for the 20th? your needs? It's a third, that would be the 20th, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tuesday the 20th. Is that a, is, is rescheduling a board meeting a problem? I know I've heard from other board members in other districts a reluctance to change dates, but I think we'd be fine. How do you feel about that? You don't think it's an issue? Okay. So we would just, um, July 20th, I don't see anything on the calendar that would conflict with that. We would just amend the, um, we would just amend the uh, calendar. So the next meeting, we can amend the board okay. meeting calendar since it is a board bylaw to amend it to change that meeting. Okay, that's good. Great. So Thank we'll, you so much, everyone. So we'll go to July, Thank you. The 20th. Okay. Okay, great. Any other um, comments any board members would like to make? Dr. Scambrick? Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here and thank you for those who set up and thank you to the Troy team who's here once again. Appreciate it. The meeting is adjourned. <clears throat>